Hello and welcome to CSC 30. This is lecture 24 and this is lesson 4. And in this lesson I want to revisit um, cross-origin resource sharing cores. I'm going to look at how we can manage and handle cores using Express. So we, we saw earlier in the course that you know we can make AJAX requests uh, and we can set up AJAX requests um, so that we can not so much bypass, I suppose, but um, essentially we can handle the same origin policy to access resources from remote hosts. It relies on the host being able to have an, an exchange of HTTP headers that allows us um, that allows um, cross-origin resource sharing, as we said. So what I want to show you in this particular one is how we might run into some, some cores issues when we um, we produce a RESTful API building for using Express, for example, and then that might not be available to other apps like our Angular app that might want to consume the resource. So we can see, for example, now we had an Angular app that was earlier running on um, port 4200, and it's not going to be able to access um, my app, my quotations app, running on this case, running on port 3500. Um, so we can we can also use, we can access our fake server, okay? Um, so I wonder why that might be the case. So let me just quickly verify that we're running, okay? So yeah, I have three five zero zero quotations. Send. I've got my data. That's what I expected to be able to have. Um, and that's my not my fake data, but I have the fake data running as well. On God, it's hard to remember all of these now. This thing is three two. Yep, I have my fake data running in tree two. And we saw how we were able to load that a little bit earlier um, using our Angular app. So what I've done is I've changed the in, in my um, data service file for our Angular app that we have earlier, I changed the local host, um, the, the service, the REST service, to point local host 3500. So that's fine, um, and um, I'm happy with that, so that's okay. And I have my app listening on, on 3500, and it's running. Um, I didn't uh, I have it running elsewhere in, in another app. So we know everything is running fine here. And um, our Angular app is running. So let's go and have a look at the Angular app and see what we see what's happening. Well, actually, it tells me that there's no data available in the table. So everything is working fine. So there's a problem with the data service. It's not been able to give it to us. And so what I've done is I've opened up the console over here and the Angular is running. And then we're telling us that, you know, the access to XML HTTP request, you know, has been blocked by cores policy. So that tells us that the access control allow option header is present on, uh, it's not present. And we need to have this set and have it set to star in other words to allow any, or to allow specific resources, whatever we want. And if you were concerned earlier about the HTTP client um, module that was running in side Angular, you can see that it's making this XML HTTP request, which we know and have done manually um, as an AJAX call. When we work with JavaScript and pure JavaScript and also when we use jQuery earlier. So the issue is that we can't see this. So what we need to do is we need to set cores running so to allow access to this resource. And you'll often have to do and set that up when you're running your, your um, Express apps or building your RESTful APIs. Now we can actually access and we had no problems earlier accessing the the data and um, from our um, from our JSON server our test server you know but that's um, that there's a reason for that of course and that's because you know there were no origin information been sent and so therefore it was handling and a whole idea of the JSON servers that would work for us in many where but you can set all that with cores with JSON server if you wish as well. And you might remember in the previous one, actually I was able to switch back and forth and show you all the data running here and I didn't have any issues. So why was that? Well, that's because in the background I was sneakily running a version that was actually having cores in place. Um, and uh, so uh, so now I just uh, turned it off just to show you how like, you know, that, that actually it isn't, um, isn't gonna work unless you've got all the, the core stuff in place. So let's get back to our, our document. So really, as I said, we have that set up um, already. We've got some of the errors that we'll have here. I've just made some record of it for you. What we really want to be able to see is we want to be able to see that the app is fine getting our data, just like we saw earlier, okay? But really, in order to make it happen, we actually had to set cores policies in our Express.js app. And once that was done, we got the, we have the expect result. We know it worked because we saw it earlier. So it's fairly straightforward to do this, okay? So you need to add cores policy support to Express.js manually. 
So we need to modify our, our Express app. Not too much. I mean, you can do all sorts of low-level, detailed um, cores policy handling on every single route, but we're just going to set it globally and so that it applies to everything to do with our app. And the policy we're going to say it was going to allow anyone to access it for our app to access it anyway. Okay. So when we're writing low level apps in Node.js pre Express JS, we actually manually created all the course headers ourselves. So we no longer need to do that. Okay. And um, although we could do it if we wanted, we could add those to Express JS ourselves and handle all that. But you know, one way to do it is just to use the course module. So we can npm install cores and save it to our project. And that's it. Now we can set all the course policies in our server. So what we'd like to be able to do then is to be able to um, uh, require this week so we need to use that as a course addition and you're probably used to my notation at this stage and then we have to add the course to the app itself so one of the things we want to be able to do is to have a list of allowed origins so where we're going to allow who we're going to allow to to have full access to our app our api and then you look this one running on 4200 we'll see that's our angular js app so it's okay we're happy to allow this angular app to have access to our data and then we did set um, some uh, course options here okay and so we're going to say the origin and then we're attaching uh, what to do when we get an origin so we're allowing no origin requests as well so that's okay we can allow the likes of um, insomnia and and curl to be able to access and then if it's okay then we'll we just say we generate a flag and error that we're not allowed by course otherwise we don't progress and um, and then we use cores with these options in our app. It's fairly straightforward here, you know, just a single callback function and we can we can add whatever we want inside this callback function here. So um, what to do when we have somebody that's allowed, we send another, a callback that's okay and then we can progress as normal. Otherwise we, um, we handle, uh, we generate an error. Now, really, we should do proper error handling and send some massive message back to the, um, to the, the visitor to tell them the visiting app and to tell them that um, you know you got some error but i'm not actually doing it i'm just flagging an, an error here that comes um, and it's not nicely handled it generates an error but uh, there are ways to do that if we were to um to design our, our api a little bit better but we haven't had to do all that stuff so really um as i said we can set the course policies in any of the routes that just sets a single policy for every single route and you can find more in the express gs resources middleware course that html document and it explains also how to do some course pre-flight stuff that we've seen um, and discussed when we theoretically uh, talked about course earlier in the module so let's go to the to code and have a look at I mean, this is the code. It's not a lot of code, this piece and this piece. So we just need to add it to our server and have it running. Then. So let's try that. Okay, so I have a server here. Um, and actually what I've done is I've got a server cores and my original server is my server here. Um, and I'm going to, uh, the, I think the original server is now running at 3.5. So we just save this. Um, hold on, is this the cores one? No. Yes, this is the course one. So sorry, this should be. We want it running on tree five here. Okay. So that's server course. My original core. I, I had it running on tree five earlier. I didn't want that. I just turned it back again. Okay. So yep. So I added this course part just up here, and um, just above our user interface additions. So we knew that worked. And um, this was the course addition to allow us to have access to the, the various hosts that are calling, and then. Um, and here's our course options, and um, we just use it. So there's not much else really to this. So let's save this, let's get it running, and then um, we we'll just start that server. We'll do the course, have it running on that database there. Okay, so we have it running on port 3500. We need to go back to our app. See, can we get it working? And we have the data, no error here, and we have access to the data. It's allowed, and uh, and we're taking that from port three five zero zero. Just to be sure, let's go back and look at our data services file. Data services file three five zero zero, and we can still access that information as well because 
we're allowing it from here I mean, we're, because we set it as part of our policy. So, so, so that was okay. So that wasn't too bad, you know. And um, it's easy to set it up. And um, ideally, you want to be setting um, policies on all of your routes, and maybe you have production server, and maybe you have test servers, and you have live servers and you want to actually set all sorts of issues around cores with those um, and of course there are other ways to authenticate and we, we we haven't had to do that in this module of course but you could see how to do it um, um uh, a little bit later yourself okay so that's it for now this one um and it was just all about adding some core support to express.js and uh, it's uh, easily done using the course module. And just remember you can also manually manipulate the headers yourself if you want. And um, it's not too difficult to do this. Um, and if you go and look at um, sources online, you'll see people showing lots and lots of ways to do it. But I think the simplest ways is just to use the, the node package managers. Um, course module. Thank you very much for watching.